For China, the world's second largest economy has set itself a lofty goal. It wants to achieve carbon neutrality in the span of decades, more specifically to do so by the year 2060. Well, CNA's Tan Shu Yi tells us more. Beijing is not alone in its quest for carbon neutrality, but no other pledge is seen as crucial and urgent as China's for the world to limit warming. The country is the world's largest carbon emitter and energy consumer. To put that in perspective, let's look at the carbon dioxide equivalent emissions. According to the JRC Science for Policy report, China accounted for 15.7 billion tonnes of the gas in 2022. That's nearly 30% of global emissions. Almost the same amount of CO2 equivalent emissions for the next four top emitters combined. To cut down on emissions involves overcoming massive hurdles. Chinese energy consumption has surged over the years. Its power sector responsible for nearly half of the country's CO2 emissions. What's more, a whopping 60% of its energy needs come from coal, a major polluter. The use of coal is set to diminish over the coming decades, as more clean energy sources such as solar and wind come online, a number expected to increase by sevenfold by the year 2060. Switching to renewables is believed to bring about additional benefits such as jobs and help regions that have yet to fully gain from the country's rapid economic development. Nuclear energy is also part of China's plan, forming a multifaceted approach to tackle emissions. And for more, we are joined now by Assistant Professor Agnes Chong from the Faculty of Law at the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Environmental and water laws are among her focus. Well, thanks for joining us, uh, Professor Chong. Now, we can see that China is pursuing green energy on multiple fronts. Uh, in your opinion, which initiatives stand out to you as the most promising and, and what kind of impact could they have on the country's carbon footprint? Um, yes, uh, thank you. Um, when when we talk about uh, China's green energy initiatives, it's important to note that China leads the world in almost all renewable installations. Um, in 2022, China installed as much solar capacity as the rest of the world combined. And last year, it then doubled new solar installations. Also last year, it increased new wind capacity by 66% and almost quadrupled new energy storage. China is also leading in battery technologies, and it's the world's biggest manufacturer of electric vehicles. Also, China is stepping into a new era for energy efficiency improvement, where it will use digitalization in sectors such as steel, chemical and cement, which would improve to 40 percent energy efficiency and allow the phase down of coal use in those manufactured sectors. So as you can see, China has a very diverse set of renewable energy resources at home and also wants to dominate the renewables industry, positioning itself as the global supplier of renewable goods to a carbon constrained world. And the extraordinary speed and scale of China's renewable sector output has driven down prices worldwide. And this is key in reducing cost barriers to renewable systems for the world and especially for the developing countries. Yeah, but Professor, the critics, you know, they have accused China of prioritizing economic growth over environmental concerns. How do you respond to these criticisms and what evidence is there? Uh, you know, I mean, you've given, you've shared with us a lot of numbers in terms of how China is serious about reducing its carbon footprint. But uh, what would you say to those criticisms? Um, I think that um, indeed that has been the case. That was China's development model uh, since it opened up in 1978. And uh, it had relied on a, a development model which relied heavily on fossil fuels. And uh, China actually uh, realized in mid-2000s, around 2006, that this development model was no longer sustainable. The, the fact that economic um, development was coming at a price, a very high price, and at the price of environmental degradation. So uh, since um, 20, 2006, in fact, that, that was the real uh, turning point where China had decided to heavily invest in the, in renewables and, and, and clean energy development. So, um, and, and since then, um, and, and, it's, and it's, uh, it's focused on um, several of its um, 
five-year policies just on developing uh, renewable energy. And, um, and since then, we've seen impre an impressive development of renewable installations and technologies in, 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 these, in these years. Um, so, yeah, I think that we're, it's really uh, come to that realisation and uh, trying to forge a new development path ahead, which embraces in, uh, renewable energies, um, installations and technologies. And uh, Professor Chong, I mean, earlier we talked about, you know, um, China's um, ambitious climate goals, which is carbon neutrality by uh, 2060. How do you think um, its environmental and water laws need to evolve to, in order to support um, this target? Um, yeah, that's that's a really good question. I think that, look, um, China's um, laws and um, institutional um, uh, have been established based on um, using uh, the, the use of uh, fossil fuels as, as the primary driver of the economy. So reforming those laws and reforming institutions are, are, are going to be difficult. Um, but notwithstanding those, uh, those difficulties, China is trying to um, address um, uh, current issues such as um, sort of energy uh, security and um, it and, and basically it uh, it's rising coal consumption um, uh, with actually trying to uh, meet its uh, carbon neutrality goals that it has set itself uh, for um, in uh, by 2060. And, uh, you know, air quality, I think in China's cities, now that is a major concern for the residents, for the government. So then how is China's energy transition likely to affect air pollution in these cities? Um, obviously, it's supposed to improve the situation, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a really good question because air quality is a direct correlation from uh, with its uh, fossil fuel usage. So, um, yeah, so um, yeah, we, we, we saw that China's uh, competent in tackling its air pollution problem. We saw that that had happened um, in, uh, 20, um, um, in, in 2013 when that was really the, the, the point where um, the air pollution in, in China was so bad. Uh, that uh, yeah, studies had shown that about 4,000 people were dying every day from air pollution. So up to that point, it shifted away from coal. And as a result, China's CO2 emissions dropped for the next uh, three years. So, um, yeah, so it, it has been done before. Nevertheless, it still uh, uses coal quite heavily in its economy. Uh, and we saw in the last three years, however, China's coal use and its CO2 emissions have begun to rise again. But nowhere near as high as they were during that 2013 peak. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, it, yeah, you know, is this a continuing concern? It, it, well, it depends if China can actually stay on its low carbon path to diversify more across its renewable and nuclear energy sources. It certainly has built up a portfolio of these uh, low, um, of these um, uh, 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 clean energy sources uh, geographically. Uh... That's right. Not to mention that um, there's a news report today announcing that China is to establish this carbon footprint management system by 2027. So um, hopefully that will help uh, move along its uh, target. Thank you so very much, uh, Assistant Professor Agnes Chong from the Chinese University of Hong Kong.